I'm a professor of forensic psychology and criminal justice at the Sales University, and I'm also a writer. I've written a great many forensic articles and books. I used to write for the Court TV website, and so I've been immersed in a lot of different areas of forensics for quite a few years. So what made me join the association was to be able to, A, find more things to write about, more venues, more people, and also to get more exposure to uh, the many different areas of forensics at conferences as well as the magazine. Being a member of, of this organization is, allows me to meet other professionals on a on professional footing at conferences. Also, when I say I write for the forensic examiner and I can do an interview of them. I, I do a lot of the historical forensics pieces, but also I do profiles of people. So if I come across something I think is particularly newsworthy or would be a benefit to members, I can approach them. I have the backing, the credentialing of that I'm already a writer for this magazine. I have a lot of articles to show for it. That also helps me actually in the publishing world to show I have this other venue that I do on a regular basis. And then um, a lot of the things that I learn in the magazine and at the conferences, I can take back to my classes. I have always found the people at headquarters to be quick, responsive, clear, and whenever I've had a question, it's answered right away. There's always somebody there or who will, if, if it's after hours, they'll get right back to me. I have worked with a number of different editors in the magazine through the years, and uh, it's always been a very easy process for me to work with them. They're very, they're quick to get me the proofs, and I'm always pleased with the results of it, so I continue to write. For me, I guess it's just the fact that I have been writing regularly for the magazine, so I do have some name recognition from that, and it does give me a certain amount of credibility when I say, you know, I could do an interview, or I could do a book review, or I could do something like that. So I think just being able to say back, in fact, to my university, I, I regularly write for this organization, this magazine, and it's highly regarded and goes out to, you know, a lot of members. I think that gives me a lot of, of um, I don't know, stiffening, if you would. and. I get, whatever change would be subtle, it would be sort of a layering kind of thing when I do this article or that article or I go to a conference and I speak about a certain subject. For example, I spoke with a profiler once uh, about female crime scenes that most people don't think about because they always think males are the ones who murder people and do these horrible things. And so we talked about the clues uh, that would indicate a female was involved or was with the male perpetrator. Um, so I think when I'm able to give those sorts of presentations, then others begin to talk with me about, you know, coming somewhere else or, you know. So yeah, I think anytime you get a venue where you can, can meet people and do some networking, that's advanced your career in some manner. The benefit of the conference is really to, first of all, there, there's presentation, so obviously there's educational benefit. The, I think a um, more important benefit for any member would be the networking opportunities, the opportunities to meet, name people like Cyril Wecht and Henry Lee and you know some of the other speakers who have come, to be able to talk with them one-on-one, um, -on -one, hang out at the bar, go out to lunch or dinner. That's always a, a major benefit because these are role models. They they have a lot of experience. They're always willing to share with with other people who are trying to learn. So there, that's that's a major thing. But also, I even if you don't get to be really close to one of the the big name speakers, if you go to a, a banquet and you sit around a table and you see who's there and see what different specialties they're in, um, the one thing about forensics is that. You know that whatever you do, it crosses over into other territories. So if you're doing a death investigation, well, it's great to meet an anthropologist and a medical examiner and a radiologist and a, you know, really anything because you never know when your case, whatever it is you're doing, is going to need another expert 
and now you have cards and you have you know you've heard from them about their cases so there's a there's a subtle effect just in being able to sit at the same table and see what everybody's doing yeah I took the medical investigator certified medical investigator I think when it was first offered growing professional uh, Got to pick my last one carefully. <laughs> um, diverse. I think the organization, because it's young, has a lot of. There are a lot of opportunities yet out there for making connections that are going to continue to improve it. But I have seen just in the years I've been a member a great deal of improvement of um, being aware of more vendors, for example, and being able to attract really high quality speakers and making liaisons with other organizations to spread out and grow, um, being alert to what's needed out there, putting a Homeland Security thing in, forensic nursing, um, other things, so they're always alert to you know, what, what need must be served? How can we pull together some resources to do that? So I think because it's a young organization, it still has the flexibility to be able to maneuver in a lot of different directions with a great deal of talent ready to go and be part of that. And that, that to me, is a great advantage of being a member.